Xiaomi Pad 5. The Xiaomi Pad 5 suffers from the software shortfalls of all Android tablets, but slick hardware and a great price point make this a true 10.2 inches iPad rival. The Xiaomi Pad 5 is an exceptional Android tablet, but it is still an Android tablet. There's little to fault on the hardware front, where you'll find a lightweight design bolstered by strong specs, a gorgeous display, and great speakers. The software site is typical for an Android tablet, which is to say it's fine, but can't match an iPad, but this isn't enough reason to resist the Pad 5. Android tablets aren't good. Or at least, so the accepted wisdom goes. Sure, Samsung throws out a few Galaxy tabs every year, for the sake of it, and Amazon floods the cheap end of the market with budget-friendly Fire tabs, but other than, that the only tablets worth buying are Apple's iPads. For better or worse, Xiaomi clearly intends to change that. The Xiaomi Pad 5 is a committed effort to producing a quality mid-range Android tablet, priced as a direct competitor to the entry-level iPad. As you might expect from Xiaomi, it outspecs its Apple equivalent in nearly every respect, while delivering the sort of slick design that Apple reserves for its premium models. Questions remain about how Android, and specifically Mai, can compete with the Potos, but with the tablet and foldable focused Android 12L on the horizon, with a bit of luck those will soon be concerns of the past. Is iron in build. Slim and lightweight. Premium look and feel. No fingerprint sensor. I've already mentioned that the Pad 5 adopts the design language of the higher-end iPads, and I mean that quite literally. With squared off edges, a slim bezel, and premium materials, this is plainly evocative of the iPad Pro aesthetic, and miles ahead of the dated design of the closest comparable iPad. You may knock Xiaomi's originality here, but you can't fault the results. The Pad 5 feels slick as hell, with a polished finish and a build that feels almost impossibly thin and light for its size. It's just 6.9mm thick, slimmer than almost any phone, and weighs only 511 grams. My review unit is in the color Xiaomi calls Cosmic Grey, though depending on where you live it may also be available in white and green. While the Pad 5's frame is aluminium, the rear is actually made of plastic. I'm sure some will meant the lack of a glass back, but plastic adds sturdiness to a device you're potentially likely to use without a case, and Xiaomi has finished it here in a way that never feels cheap, or, well, plasticky. In terms of controls, you'll only find a power button and volume rocker, placed on two sides of the same corner of the frame. Elsewhere there's a USB-C port, and a pogo connector for Xiaomi's accompanying keyboard. On that note, there is an official keyboard and stylus pair for the Pad 5, though I haven't been able to test either out, so I can't speak to their performance or quality. Neither are available from the UK's online Mi store, which means in practice you probably can't get hold of them either, though availability may vary elsewhere. There's one frustrating omission from a hardware perspective, there's no fingerprint sensor. There's a small cylindrical marking on the right-hand side of the frame, that looks like it's meant to host a fingerprint reader, but it's not there, and neither is one supported in the display. You can use face unlock, but that's less secure, and often less convenient, so it's a shame, not to see any fingerprint option available. Display and audio. Grade 11 inches, 2.5K 120Hz display. Slim bezel. Impressive quad speakers. The big draw of the screen here is that it boasts a 120Hz refresh rate, another premium touch, that you'd not necessarily expect at this price. This enables smoother animations and increased fluidity across the device. It's a touch that's now near standard across Android phones, so there's good odds you've tried it out by now. It will also unlock the potential for frame rates above 60fps, if you're a keen gamer. The display is no slouch elsewhere though. This is an 11 inches panel with a MIDI 2.5K resolution, 1600x2560. Although it's IPS LCD rather than a LED, you still get excellent color range and support for both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Whether you're working, browsing the web, or streaming a few shows, this is a really enjoyable display to use, with punchy colors and great viewing angles. No, it's not the absolute creme de la creme of tablet screens, but at this price it doesn't need to be. Xiaomi has arguably put even more effort into the audio. No, before you ask, there's number 3.5mm audio jack, it'll be wireless, or USB-C headphones only I'm afraid, but the quad speakers here are really impressive. Speakers matter much more on a tablet than a phone, as you're more likely to use them for watching TV or taking video calls, and I've really got no complaints about the output here. Of course there's a limit to the base zoom font offer, but for the size of the Pad 5 there's plenty of audio power here, not to mention Dolby Atmos support. Specs and performance. Flagship performance. Only 6GB RAM. Number 4G or 5G option. Xiaomi has made smart choices in specsing the Pad 5 out, which effectively maximize performance without forcing it into a higher price point. Key to that is the choice to use the Snapdragon 860, an overclocked version of an older Qualcomm flagship chipset. Essentially it means you get enough power to make most everyday tasks a breeze, and keep this capable of playing even demanding games at decent settings, but you're not paying extra for the latest 5G connectivity or machine learning upgrades and features optimized for the demanding cameras in flagship phones. 
if there's a compromise, it's that the Pad 5 is only available with 6GB of RAM, where I would have loved to see 8GB available. In terms of storage, there are models with 128GB or 256GB, though availability does vary by region, and bear in mind that there's no Micros card slot, so this is non-expandable. In performance benchmarks the Pad 5 kept pace with last year's premium flagship Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, outpacing all the cheaper Galaxy Tabs and the recent Nokia T20 tablet. Admittedly it lags a little behind all the iPads on pure performance, but on the Android side at least this is one of the most powerful tablets around, especially given the price. I did mention that one of Xiaomi's cost-cutting measures is to skip 5G entirely. In fact there's number 4G either, with the global version of the Pad 5 only available in a Wi-Fi model, China gets a 5G Pad 5 Pro model, but it's not launching elsewhere. So to bear that in mind, if you're looking for an always online device. Perhaps disappointingly Wi-Fi 6 isn't supported either, so you won't get the absolute fastest speeds, but you'd need a pretty modern router, to support that tech anyway. Elsewhere there's Bluetooth 5.0, though understandably there's no NFC, which is rarely used on tablets anyway. Battery and charging. All day battery life. 33W charging, but ships with a 22.5W charger. No wireless charging. Tablet battery life is tricky to assess, because use cases vary so dramatically. Some will need an all-day device for taking notes and working on, while others just want something to sit on the coffee table for checking your emails, or to spin up the odd Netflix episode. I tend to fall into the latter camp, and with that in mind the Pad 5's 8720 mAh battery has impressed I can leave it ready to use for days at a time without topping up, and I've never felt overly concerned about its longevity. The artificial battery benchmark reveals more. The Pad 5 lasts around 10 and a half hours in the Pmark battery test, better than any Samsung Galaxy Tab we've tested in the last two years, and clearly enough to power a day's work on the device. Once that battery has been drained, charging is one of the oddities of the Pad 5. Look up the tablet specs, and you'll see it listed with support for 33W charging, but you won't find a 33W charger in the box. Instead, Xiaomi ships the Pad 5 with a 22.5W charger, which is capable of topping the tablet up to 25% in 30 min good for a tablet, but not awe inspiring. If you have a faster charger around, or don't mind buying one, you can hit faster speeds though. I managed a slightly more impressive 35% battery back in half an hour using the 55W Xiaomi charger that ships with the Mi 11, which should in theory have delivered power at around the 33W the tablet can handle. Finally, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that there's no wireless charging support. Few tablets offer it, especially comparatively affordable ones, and it's certainly a feature that's less in demand for these larger devices. Camera. Disappointing 8MP front-facing camera. Decent rear camera. Cameras don't really matter much on tablets. Or rather, rear cameras don't matter much. This is the one hardware area, where Xiaomi has undoubtedly been bested by Apple's entry-level iPad. This year Apple made the smart choice, to load the better camera onto the iPad's front, whereas Xiaomi has followed smartphone norms, and prioritized the rear shooter.